hear me clearly as you can see. As you can see, I am still in route, but that is okay. Um, can you hear me okay? Let me make sure I get a thumbs up. All right, perfect, perfect. All right, well, on today, like Rock said, she did call at the 11th hour, literally at the 11th hour going into midnight. Um, but you all know that we always stay ready so that when God calls, we're already in position for what he has for us. So on today, we're going to be talking about um, the fact of being still and God being our refuge. So before I jump into everything that is eating uh, that we're going to talk about, I want to tell you a story because this is going to set up the preference of everything that we're going to talk about. So um, there was a school teacher and she was responsible for uh, watching the kids during recess. And so she's outside and the kids are playing and they happen to be playing a game of recess. So there's this one child who's running around and everybody, you know, they're doing it. If you're not familiar with tag, the way that it works is that somebody is the it person. And that it person is responsible for tagging. And if you get tagged, then you are going to be out. Well, on this particular instance, there was a certain little uh, certain little boy who um, had kind of like a, an attraction for people kind of picking on him and just, just kind of getting at him. And so while they were at recess, instead of making a normal game of freeze tag where the in person is traveling and trying to tag everybody else, instead, everybody decided to run after this one little boy and him being scared and being uh, just nervous about what was going on. He's running around and he goes to the school teacher and he says, teacher, 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 teacher help me. They're all coming after me. And the teacher is, you know, while he's just going on, he's like, you don't understand. They don't like me. They don't like me. This is happening. And I can help you. Help me. Help me. Help me. And he's so overwhelmed with everything that is going on that he just keeps going, going, and going. And the teacher says, I need for you to, one, remain calm. I need you to be still and stay right here in front of me. The little boy is like, no, they're going to get me. They're going to come after me. I can't just be still. Do you know what's going to happen? And he's trying from place to place. And the teacher is literally and he's saying, son, all I need for you to do is just stand right here in front of me and be still. You don't have to worry about everyone else and everything else that's going on. Him and his rage, he's like, no, 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 you don't understand. They're going to take it from me. And he has meltdown. And he's almost at the point of tears because he's so consumed by what everybody else is doing and while everybody else is coming after him. And the teacher literally said, so all that I need for you to do is to stand in front of me and to be still. That's all that I need for you to do. And so the little boy finally calms himself down. And as he's calming himself down, he says, okay. And he takes a breath and he says, okay. Now, this whole time, he's standing in front of the teacher, running around in the circle, and she says, son, I need you to look around. And so as he stops and he looks around, he realizes that all the other kids have gone and they're still playing their game and they weren't even trying to see what he was about. They weren't even trying to see him. They didn't even pay attention to him because he was just still sitting there in front of the teacher. Well, my sisters, the reason why I wanted to tell this story about what was going on in this little boy and the teacher is because sometimes you and I are the same way. Picture you being that little boy. Life and trials and tribulations, they are going to happen and circumstances are going to arise and you're going to find yourself in this space of running and asking God, God, I need your help. God, I need for you to help me. You don't understand. I got bills that are due and I don't have enough money. God, I got this new medical diagnosis and I don't know what's going to come. God, I'm just toiling because I'm not getting along with my spouse or my children are acting up or I 
just am not getting along with my family member or God, I'm just being tasked with all of these impossible things and I just don't know what to do. And all the time we're running to God and we're running to him and we're saying, God, do you see me? God, can you hear me? God, do you understand what I'm going through? And God is simply telling you, daughter, I need for you to just stand here and be still. God is consistently telling us, I don't need for you to do anything else. I just need for you to stand here in front of me and be still. Verse that we're going to focus in on is Psalm chapter 46. And the verse there, we're going to start with number one. And it says that God is our refuge and our strength always ready to help in times of trouble. Now we're going to drop down to Psalms, the same 46, and then we're going to go to verse number 10. Verse number 10 simply says, be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. And then I'm going to add verse number 11 as well. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. If you're not familiar with Psalms chapter 46, I know we know these particular verses because we quote them all the time. They're out everywhere and everyone's um, blogs, you know, uh, inspirational walls. You see it all the time. You see it all the time. And as I was thinking about the fact that how life has been going on. A lot of us have been going through and enduring hardships and trials. You all know I have been dealing with my daughter um, and her and her recovery. You all know that she had uh, that surgery. And it seemed like there was a lot that was going on during that moment, during that time. There was moments of uncertainty. There was moments of just being overwhelmed by life, just being overwhelmed by circumstances. And some of you, if you really sit back and you reflect and you think, you have been going through hardships as well. And I don't know about you, but you have been going through these cycles of, Lord, do you see me? Lord, are you here with me? Lord, can you guide me? What's going on? And all the while, God has been standing right there in the midst. And God has been saying, Tiffany, daughter, insert yourself. I need you to just be still and stand in front of me. Now, when you're reading Psalms, especially this one, this was written at a time frame when um, the... the <clears throat> At the time when David and some of the people, you know, who affiliate with him, write the books of Psalms, they were going through hardships and the hardships that they were going through were not necessarily times of like things were falling apart. But at this point, especially um, when writers are talking about Psalms and talking about David and they guess about what was happening, this is the time frame where he was um, in deep like lament he was reflecting he was trying to figure out okay what's going to happen to me what is going to go on if you don't know David was being chased by Saul because Saul was upset that he was going to be taking on as a leader there was some points where um, he was excited about having David in his company and then there's other moments where he was just I don't like him and just trying to take after him. And so David in his infinite time frame, while he's thinking and he's reflecting and trying to be proactive in uh, this newfound uh, awareness or this newfound position and anointing that's going to come on him, he's writing. And in his Psalms, he's always trying to uh, just put out himself and the writers of the Psalms, they all kind of have that same theme where it is, you know, God, I'm going to take my refuge. You're going to see stories or you're going to see the Psalms or poems, as I like to call them, of uh, people who are just trying to leave it all with God. And so when we get to Psalms chapter 46 and this verse number one, it says that God is our refuge and our strength always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the water surge. We always quote that God is our refuge, but I don't know if you ever think about what that word refuge really means. That whole refuge that it's talking about is really getting into the fact that when you are in your time of trouble, when you are in your time of 
need. You're going to need somebody who can stand before you, someone that you can set your focus on, someone that you can be tapped into, who is going to be your place of comfort, who is going to be your place of um, recluse, somebody who is going to be your place of tapping into your source of power. And so when you think about our story that we had about the little boy who was running around and the whole time the teacher could see everything else that was going on the, the teacher could see the kid the teacher could see what was happening but the instruction was I need you to just be here and stand in front of me see what the little boy didn't realize and what the little boy didn't recognize is that the teacher was a sign of authority the teacher was a sign of protection the teacher was the symbol of I have you you're covered and so the whole time, the teacher already knew that as long as that little boy was standing in front of her, nobody was going to come because of her authority, because of her power, because she was refuge for that little boy. So while he is moving around, still shaking around, even after she gave him the instruction of, I need you to just be still. He still was worried about everything else, not realizing that the refuge that he needed, the calm that he needed, the peace that he was looking for, he was standing in front of the whole entire time. Sister, on today, what is it that you are running? What is it that you feel is chasing you? What is it that you need to stand still and be in front of? What is it that you need to let go of, I should say, so that you can stand still in front of the master? See, we make life and we make our circumstances very over the top. We make it uh, where we just don't know what to do and we go all out of our mind, losing it, literally losing our mind, when all we have to do is be still and stand in front of of the teacher. See, the teacher knew that as long as that little boy was there with her, nobody else was going to have to come to him. Nothing else was going to happen because he had, she was all power, all authority. And sometimes, sister, God is telling you, I need you to just be still. Anybody been running this week, running not physically, but running in your mind? Anybody been going through some hardships this week and you just found yourself all over the place when God is trying to tell you, I just need you to be still. If you be still long enough, you will understand that I have the power to dissipate anything that is coming your way. If you stand still long enough, you'll recognize that I have power to be your refuge. If you stand still long enough, sister, you'll understand that not only will God be your refuge, your place of being able to get away, your place of being able to break free, but then the next part, it says that God is your refuge and he is your strength. Sister, I don't know about you, but I know that life, it gets hard. Life has a way of making me have to sit down. Life has a way of making me be still, sometimes involuntarily. See, God says, I need you to be still voluntarily, meaning I need you to take consecrated time. I need you to take effort, put some energy into being still in front of me so that when you do, you understand that I can give you peace. I can give you hope. I can give you the strength that you need to be able to endure the circumstances of that are going on. But just like that little student, he was so caught up in being everywhere, doing everything. He was so caught up in being able to figure it out, trying to get it out. He's rushing, he's moving, he's doing everything else. And she just simply needed him to be still. Sister, I ask you again on today, have you been still? Have you been running and going around? Have you been going crazy, trying to figure things out, trying to put this out, trying to figure out what's going to come next? Have you been going, going, going? Have you been coming to God and you've been saying, God, I just need this, God, I just 
I don't understand, God. I'm leaving it at your feet and I, I trust you and I'm there for you, but you really have not been still and you really have not. When we talk about God being our power, when we talk about God being our authority, there is um, another passage that comes to mind and it's one scripture that we always talk about all the time and that's Isaiah chapter 40 and verses 29 through 31 we've talked about this a lot of times uh where we have talked about how God is uh, our help and he'll help us mount up like eagles and everything else right one of the things that I found that was really powerful about this connection in the Psalms and then this connection in Isaiah when it talks about God being like a power source one of the things that the word power literally means and I'm going to read it to you from the dictionary right and it says power is a supernatural force a supply of energy. It is a supply of energy for physical strength, but it's often associated with the deity that is above compare, above comprehension. Y'all, when I thought about that and I thought about how Psalms is trying to tell us that God is our refuge and how God is our strength and how in that verse number 10, it says that if you be still and know that I am God, that know that I am God, that God reference that it's talking about is not just knowing who God is for him, like saying, okay, I know God. It's actually telling you, look, I need for you to be still and know that I am the power. I need you to be still and I need you to know that I am the all and all. I need you to be still and understand that I am that power, supernatural power source. I'm that deity in your life that can give you what you need to handle the circumstance and handle the situation that is coming your way. So Star, that's why you have to be intentional about being still in the presence of God, because in the presence of God, that's where you get that extra power. That's where you're able to be storing. That's why when we get to Isaiah and we're reading that scripture, Isaiah chapter 40, and then when we get to 29 through 31, that's why it talks about how you have to get into that power, how you have to tap into it. In that verse number 31, that's one of the ones that, you know, we often quote like all the time. And we talk about how we'll mount up on wings of eagles, right? And then we're going to be able to soar, how we're going to run and not get weary, how we're walk and not be faint, right? That's what we always talk about. Let me tell you how powerful this really is, okay? So during this time frame, when Isaiah is writing about, um, you know, the eagle and writing that very famous scripture that we have, and this notion about us being still and understanding the authority, I was going back over it and I was reading um, about the eagle, right? Because, I, you know, we read that verse and we get all excited because of what it means and, you know, the intention behind it. We're like, oh, okay, okay. And you get excited about it. But one of the things that... I was, when I read it, I was like, why are you talking about an eagle? Why are you talking about a bird in the middle of him telling you you'll get strength and telling you, you know, you'll have power? It didn't really click to me. And I said, and then why is he talking about the eagle? Like some stuff just did not make sense, you know, when I'm reading it. And one of the things that I learned about in this time frame, um, when you read Bible, especially in the Old Testament, there's a lot of like symbolism and they really refer to like animals and um, just different artifacts and they all mean something. Like everything has a symbol, has some type of awareness. I looked up why the eagle was so important and why they made that reference. An eagle is the only bird that can fly in the sky and look towards the sun and not shrink or shriver. All other birds, when they fly, they can't look directly at the sun. They have to divert. And that's why sometimes you'll see them kind of swooning, depending on where they're at in the sky. But the eagle is the only bird that can fly high above all the other elevations, but can look directly at the sun and not flinch and not waver. And if that's not enough, the eagle's wings 
are so strong and so powerful that they say that the eagle's wings are the only wings of a bird that doesn't have to flap like you know you'll see most of the birds and they just kind of flap and they do a little flapping notion and the eagle is the only one who does not have to flap when they are like met with the perfect wind and the perfect um like gliding they don't have to flap their wings just because of the pure strength that they have and so when I was thinking about that and I read that I said huh I said this is very interesting and then it talked about how the eagle looks at the sun looks towards the sun and in their flying they do a kind of still movement where they're still up in the air and their wings are spread out but they're actually being still while the air and everything else glides them on their path and on their way y'all i almost lost it because i said huh now in this it's telling us that we have to be still right we're talking about remembering who our authority is and then isaiah a little bit later on and during this whole kind of time frame is literally saying look when you're going through your hardships when you're going through your trials when you're trying to find a way to get strength when you're trying to find a way for you to not be carried out by the circumstances and the situations of life when you're trying to find ways that you can be still this is where it comes back to just like he says like the wings of an eagle the eagle is the only bird that can look straight into the sun again one french won't flicker sisters that's a comparison to how we can be when we are being still in the presence of god almighty i don't know about you but i love the fact that i can look straight to the sun i can look into it not the s-u-n but i can look at the s-o-n and when i look at the s-o-n and i am trying to stay focused on just him when i'm in my being still moments when god is telling me tiffany i don't need you to move i don't need you to do anything i just need you to sit right here and trust in me y'all remember my definition of trust right fully believing that God can take the weight of everything that I'm going through, everything that I'm carrying and believing that he will handle it all. Sisters, when you are going through and you're being like that little boy in our story and you're running around and moving, listen to the teacher. He says, I need you to just be still and focus in on me. Sister, I need you to focus in on God. Tiffany, focus in on God. Look straight into the sun while you're being still still because in your stillness there is some learning and some development that God wants us to do in your stillness there's something that God needs for you to develop in your stillness there's something that God is trying to tell you in your stillness there's something that God needs to deposit into your soul in your stillness there's something that God needs for you to take root in sister what are you taking root in are you being still in the presence of the authority are you able to focus on the s-o-n so that when you have to get ready to take on your circumstances take on your trials you can spread and fly and if that's not enough y'all in bible time when they prayed you know we are real fancy now and we pray we have our hands we close our eyes or you know we teach our little kids to you know put your hands together and pray and it's real closed off in bible time back in the old testament time frame when they really really needed to get something from god or they were really sorry repentant of what they were doing you'll often hear how they'll say that we need you to consecrate yourself I'm like clean yourself up get ready because you're about to go into the presence of god right and then after that consecration time when they come they didn't just pray with the oh father no they prayed with their hands outstretched they prayed stretched all the way out saying here I am because when they prayed with their hands outstretched you saw everything you were bearing it all that's why bear it all to the Lord that's why the scripture is there they had that posture when they were there so stars in your being still and that eagle that it talked about the eagle's wings are spread out 
symbolism. We got to be spread out. Bear yourself. Be all bare. And when you are all spread out and when you are in that posture and you're looking straight to the S-O-N, when you're being still in front of the master, that's when he can pour into you everything that you need. That's when you're able to receive. You can't receive just you got to have everything all out. You got to be all in because when you're all in, that's when you allow God to be your refuge. When you allow him to be your refuge, you get strength. That's why he says, be still because in your being still, you don't have time to gather all these. You don't have time to put all the pieces together. All you have to do is stand in front of God almighty. On today, sister, all I want to do is encourage us that when we are being still, truly make sure that we're making God our refuge. Truly make sure that we're making God our all in all. Sister, you're going to need strength to go through this day. You're going to need strength to get through the circumstances. Death is certain, and it's happening each and every single day. There are people who are hurting just because they have been no good to themselves. They've been all strapped up. They've been tied up. They've been tangled up with the thoughts of their mind. You might have found yourself being caught up and tangled up in everything else that is going on. You might find yourself running around. You trying to help everybody else. You help a mom and them. You help a daughter. You help a son. You help a grandma and them. You help an auntie, cousin. Fill in the blank with everything else that is happening. And after a while, You'll find yourself like our little boy going around everywhere. You're so consumed with everything else. And in the midst of it, God is trying to tell you, hey, I need you to be still. In the midst of it, God is trying to tell you, I am God. I am your authority. God is trying to tell you, I need you to get into posture with your arms stretched. So while you're being still, you can focus in on what is important. I am important. God is important. He is your refuge. He's your way of being able to get back, to get away from everything else that is consuming you. Just like in our story, you remember how when the little boy finally got to a place where he was calm and he actually was being still. And after he was still, the teacher just simply turned him around. And when she turned him around, he saw that nobody was even focusing in on him. The star. When you get still enough and you actually surrender and you make yourself available after you've gotten into the posture, God will turn you around and you will see that that thing that you was worried about, them people, the stuff, the even the things that you had to go through, even if it was you, you will see that it doesn't even it, it wasn't even that big of a deal. It wasn't even what you made it out to be. See, that's what God will do when you allow yourself to be stilled by his presence. When you allow yourself to get into position, that's when God shows up. Sister, our God is there. He is waiting. He is wanting you to get into the space that you can hear you, Tiffany. On the side. Okay. Will you stay focused in on the sun? Will you open up your hands and will you get into the posture that God needs you to be so that he can stand in and be your refuge? Sister, will you be still enough, long enough for God to come in and do what he needs to do? See, it was only when the little boy got still. It was only when he stopped going and going and going and actually laid it there. That's when God was able to step in and he turned everything around. Just like he turned the little boy around and he saw everything else that was going on, God can turn you. He can turn your situations around. He can turn that negative thinking that you have into positive. He can make you feel as if you were nothing into being something. That's just how good God is. And if that's not enough, sister, he can do it for me while he's working it for the Alicia, the Olivia's, the, the Roxy's, while he's working it out for everybody he can do it at the same time he just needs us to be still long enough to steal away and understand his presence understand his power understand who he is in our life so the next time that you're reading psalm chapter 46 and you hear that verse or you see that verse about god being your refuge and god being your strength 
always ready to help in times of trouble, remember that that's talking about the master, that God is always there. He's been there. He ain't moving. He ain't leaving. We think that it is. And we put all this stuff in our mind that God's just not is. He's been there the whole time. He's just waiting for you to get to verse number 10. And he's waiting for you to be still. He's waiting for you to be still and acknowledge that he is the God, that he is the authority. He's waiting for you to get into your posture, arms wide stretched, bearing it all, putting and placing it at his feet. Because at the feet, at the altar, at the place of where God is, that is where we get our strength. help. Katrina challenged us on these last four weeks. She said, will you have the audacity to go to the God that you know is the great I am? Will you have the audacity to stand before God and say, God, I trust you with my life. God, I trust you so much that I can be still and know that you are my refuge. I can be still and know that you are my strength. Will you have the audacity to talk to your circumstances? Will you have the audacity to stand before God's throne? You lift yourself up in prayer, bear it all and say, God, handle it. God, it's already done. I triple dog dare you to have the audacity to say, God, I know what you are going to do. And I know you did it before you're going to do it again. So I'm not going to run around. I'm going to be still in your presence. I'm going to be still and understand you are the authority over my life. I'm going to be still and understand that you are are God all by yourself. And there is no one like you. You can search all over, but you ain't gonna find a God like mine. I don't know what you're going through, sister, but what I do know is that if you take enough time to be still, if you take enough time to recognize the great I am, if you take enough time to understand that God wants you, that God cares for you, that God loves you, that God is never going to leave you, you will understand that God is your refuge. Let's take wing, let's fly like the eagle, let's soar while we're looking at the S-O-N and while we're being still in the presence of God Almighty. Sisters, the lesson is yours. Will you be still on today? Uh, Rox is not here. I realized that. So it's back on me. <laughs> I just realized that. But hey, that's the lesson for today.